So just Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining today. My name is Catherine Conley. I'm the Community Relations and Engagement Coordinator with Seniors and All. Welcome to this week's talk about Tech No Tutors and Empower. I'll introduce our guest speakers in a few minutes. Sign language interpreting services for this session is provided by an inclusion grant from the Disability Policy Office, Department of Ch Children, seniors and social development to whom we are greatly um uh, we are very grateful for as always there's a few housekeeping tips please mute your mic to block out any outside noise the closed captioning button is on the bottom of the screen please place your questions and comments in the chat however we will have an opportunity to ask questions directly over to kyle and sherry throughout the presentation this session is being recorded. And of course, if you have any uh, suggestions for presentations and topics, please don't hesitate to reach out. Barb, can you go ahead and read the land acknowledgement, please? Good morning. We respectfully acknowledge the land on which we gather as the ancestral homelands of the Beothic, whose culture has now been erased forever. We also acknowledge the island of Uta Unguk as the unceded traditional territory of the Beothic and the Mi'kmaq. And we acknowledge Labrador as the traditional and ancestral homelands of the Innu of Nitasanen and the Inuit of Nunatsiavut and the Inuit of Nun Atuavut. We recognize all First Peoples who were here before us, those who live with us now and the seven generations to come. As First Peoples have done since time immemorial, we strive to be responsible stewards of the land and to respect the cultures, ceremonies, and traditions of all who call it home. As we open our hearts and minds to the past, we commit ourselves to working in a spirit of truth and reconciliation to make a better future for all. Thank you very much. Welcome. Now, I'd like to introduce um, our first guest speaker. Uh, Kyle is a project assistant with Techno Tutors. Kyle, is it Techno Tutors or Tech Now Tutors? Techno Tutors, like knowledge. No Tutors, okay. Um, a free digital literacy program that aims to give others the tools to use technology in their daily lives. He holds a bachelor's degree in communication studies in English. Kyle loves working in nonprofit community, and he loves teaching others through patience and empathy. In his spare time, you'll likely find him playing rock and metal songs on his guitar. <laughs> and our second presenter uh, is Sherry Tucker, who's with Empower, and she's a member service coordinator uh, at Empower with the Disability Resource Center. Her role is to coordinate social, recreational, and learning opportunities for people with disabilities in Newfoundland and Labrador. Sometimes this happens by organizing activities for local members, but more often than not, it happens through partnerships and other organizations and municipalities that want to offer more inclusive and accessible activities. Before working in this position, Sherry fulfilled a number of local and national contracts contracts with a number of not-for-profit organizations in Newfoundland and Labrador. And she credits building her skill set through her early military career while studying in university. She is also a person who identifies as living with a disability, with disability, and is incredibly passionate about supporting her community. When she isn't working or volunteering, you can find Sherry either cooking in the kitchen, creating art at home, or shooting pool at Westside Charlie's. So I'm actually going to stop my screen right now. And Kyle, uh, I'm going to let you go ahead and share your screen. Perfect. <clears throat> well, hello, everyone. Um, as Catherine mentioned, I'm Kyle, and I'm a project assistant with Techno Tutors. So today I thought we could go over um, what exactly our program offers. And there's what we call a barrier 
um, with with technology. And Mike, who's actually on the call here, Mike Keo, he came up with this term called techno fear. Uh, people have this this fear of technology, and I thought I'd come up with some tips to sort of overcome uh, that fear. And I also got some questions from you guys to to answer later on. So can everyone see my screen okay? Yes. Yes, perfect. All right. So uh, Techno Tutors is actually a program with uh, CSCNL and uh, the Community Sector Council of Newfoundland and Labrador. We're just a, a nonprofit independent organization that's focused on collaboration to make Newfoundland and Labrador a prosperous and inclusive province. So a lot of times we're uh, collaborating with other organizations such as Seniors to Know, and then other times we're actually creating our own in-house programs to uh, tackle these social and economic issues that uh, we seem to be facing. And then Techno Tutors is one such program we created to kind of lower the, the digital divide and the social economic barriers by offering free digital literacy teaching lessons. So um, I'll get into exactly what we offer, but basically we just want people to be able to use technology in their daily lives. And that could be everything from surfing the internet to using Microsoft Excel spreadsheets. Um, yeah, so our mission with the CSC is to encourage citizen engagement, promote the integration of social and economic development, and provide leadership in shaping public policies. So through techno tutors, we're giving people of all walks of life the tools to be engaged, to stay informed, and to help support social and economic development within their respective worlds. And like I was saying, we our goal is to help in like with techno tutors itself, our goal is to help individuals learn how to use technology to improve their daily lives. And there's no limit to like age or background. Um, we've, we've had people from all walks of life join our program. And we also encourage people from all walks of life to join our program. So here's two pictures of our team. Um, on the left here, you see our local team uh, with me on the, on the far left. And on the right, you'll have our regional trainers, except for this last image down here um, on the, the bottom right, that would be Yusuf, and he's our train the trainer coordinator. But anyways, the idea is, although we have all of our workshops and drop-ins and things like that throughout the Avalon region, we do have some regional trainers uh, around the Conerbrook region, um, with like through Western, we also have someone in Central, and we also have um, someone in the Buren Peninsula. So we're and we were trying to expand into Labrador, but unfortunately, we were unable to secure like the right candidate. But we are trying to make sure that even rural regions are able to pick up on our program. So what services does TechnoTutors offer exactly? Well, we have training workshops, um, which tend to run between an hour and two hours, but we try to aim for an hour and a half. Uh, we have comprehensive curriculum. So I'll go over briefly like some of the stuff that we offer, but it, there's a lot of different options. We also offer one-on-one -on -one support, which I'll also be going over and we offer what are called information sessions, one-time sort of training sessions that uh, can give you like a specific skill. And uh, these statistics are actually a bit outdated because now we have over 50 workshops and f over 500 workshop participants. And that was just since last year. So, I mean, we still have a full year to go to, to see how what kind of impact we can leave, but it's good to see that the Techno Tutors program is already being used so extensively. Um, so let's get into what our training workshops offer. These are like single session training, uh, training sessions that include several workshops and productivity. 
uh, social media, marketing, employment, organization essentials. So, for example, we have a class on Canva if you're trying to learn how, like the ins and outs of Canva, including the, the new AI tools feature that's in Canva. Uh, social media management, so that could be um, how to manage different social media networks like uh, Facebook and Twitter through and, and Instagram through like Meta, for example. Meta has this uh, this tool that allows them to schedule posts basically and look at the analytics. So we go over that that kind of stuff if you're looking for the background. Google Workspace, um, so everything from Google Docs to Google Slides and, and Gmail, Google Meet, everything that you can think of with Google and those skills are transferable with Microsoft. We we offer those types of classes. And although we are trying to get into financial literacy to be able to teach like Wave Accounting or QuickBooks, we haven't developed the curriculum yet, but that is on the agenda for the near future. One of our most popular services are these one-on-one -on -one drop ins So it, this is sort of like a tech support session where you book in advance, and they'll last, they're about 45 minutes. I know it's just half an hour, but that usually includes like a registration form and stuff. But if you've already registered with their program, you'll get like the full 45 minutes. Uh, so you book a dedicated time slot, and then we'll be able to help you with like troubleshooting your devices, setting up parental controls, uh, going over like digital health. Uh, maybe you've been locked out of an account and you want to figure out the steps to like reset your password, uh, just any questions that you have on technology, we do our best to answer you, uh, answer within these one-on-one -on -one sessions. And they appear every single Wednesday. Um, and I can, I can share the, the link afterwards if you'd like. The comprehensive curriculum is more of a series sort of thing that we're, that we've developed. So we've actually just partnered with the uh, the Newfoundland Pensioners Association, and we were able to offer the beginner series. So it goes over like digital basics, internet fundamentals, email and communications, but these are like um, a full day program each that has a certificate at the end that'll give you a lot of basic digital skills. And then intermediate, you'll get those intermediate skills with like productivity, spreadsheet skills, online safety and security, and how to design presentations. Uh, we haven't developed the advanced one, but that one is also on the way. And that's just digital media and content creation, advanced internet skills, and we'll also go over email and communication. And then our last service is information sessions. So these are a bit more broad, and, but they offer like specific needs, um, like an individual class, I guess, rather than a, a larger course. And one of our most popular ones is protecting yourself online, which we'll be doing with Catherine next month. Uh, and that'll give you like tips on how to avoid different types of scams, um, how to create strong passwords, what the hell is 2FA, all those types of questions we'll be able to offer, uh, the answer. And you can see other types of classes we have there with we're doing power school and Rycor if you're interested in learning those or if you have uh, a child who's interested in learning like maybe you know a parent who needs to learn that for uh, for their children then you might be able to recommend the class to them digital library online banking uh, we're doing mental health resources soon so lots of cool stuff to to take a look into with techno tutors and then we do have special interest sessions. So these are more uh, basic digital skills, I guess, with video and audio editing, music apps. Um, if you're interested in learning how to use Instagram from a business perspective or an individual perspective, we have one of each. Uh, social media for employment, all these different types of skills. Uh, and the other thing to note is Although we have we offer over 50 different classes, there's still a lot of room for growth within our program. So if you have an idea of something that you'd like to to learn with us, 
we actually offer an evaluation survey after all of our sessions where we kind of evaluate what you want, um, what you what you liked about the workshop, but also what you'd like going forward. So you can offer workshop recommendations that way. Okay, so any questions about the Techno Tutors program itself? During the presentation, you did have we did have a question in the chat there to say, what is Canva? Canva. So Canva is basically um, a graphic and animation design software, but it's very simplistic that uh, it's user friendly, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's it's easier to learn than a lot of things like Adobe Photoshop. So if you're interested in doing graphic design, uh, maybe you're you're leading like some type of 50 plus group where you'd like to um, create like graphics on Facebook. Canva actually has a free option that allows you to create those types of graphics. Um, so if you're interested in learning Canva, you can do that with us. On one of the slides as well, there was an abbreviation there of ESL. Yes, English second language. Thank you so much. Just uh, just want to make sure that if we have abbreviations there that we actually say what they are for, for all of us to understand. Yeah, sorry about that. No, that's quite all right. Uh, is there any other questions for Kyle at this time? I wonder, yeah, I wonder if Kyle could tell us what uh, facilities have available. How we're aware, especially with our group and that type of thing. Many of us are groups of volunteers that hold our meetings at, at the Jumpin' Bean or Tim Hortons, whatever the case might be. So I understand uh, that um, you've been able to make facilities available for and, and some equipment. So perhaps you can elaborate a bit on that. Um, the, could you, could you yeah. ask that question again? Sorry, Mike. Like, yeah. Okay. You, you've got a, a facility that people can come into, uh, right. for those 30 minute, 45 drop-ins. Uh, you also have, I believe a meeting room that you use on occasion for larger groups. Yes. Cards. And for those who may not have the piece of equipment they want to learn, I understand that community sector council had, I don't know if they still have it. Uh, some equipment that they can make available to us. Yes. Uh, all, so all for no charge. Yeah. Yes, all, all of our services are no charge. Um, so our drop-in sessions, like I was saying, are are one-on-ones that allow you to book an appointment and go over any questions you have. And usually, you'll bring your own device for that. But we actually do have a couple of laptops and like iPads and things. So if you don't have a device but you're interested in learning. Uh, we have like that that sort of mobile uh, ability to allow you to to still have accessibility within our sessions. Uh, as for our workshops, we offer free workshops within our our downstairs boardroom, and it could seat up to like thirty people uh, at a, at any given time. And those are for those larger topics that we'll be teaching. So generally, we'll we'll be teaching. Uh, in that boardroom um, in for like our public sessions. And when we do private sessions with other organizations, we generally go to their location. Um, that said, if you're interested in learning on Zoom, sort of like how this the session that we're doing today, uh, TechnoTutors is open to teaching via Zoom. So we're, we're sort of trying to meet as many needs as possible throughout the community. Hi, uh, thanks for the question, Mike. There's another question there in the chat room. Is um, is there drop-in sessions in Grand Falls? Um, no, because I I know we're we have a regional trainer in the Cornerbrook region. Uh, we have a regional trainer within um uh, Marystown and Buren. And we have another regional trainer around the, um, like Reedville area. That said, um, if you know how to use Zoom, like as we're all on the call today, you can book from anywhere across the island. And with the Avalon team, we'll be able to, to teach you that way. It's just, 
we are sort of limited on um, physical locations, unfortunately. Now you do have some education sessions coming up in Western Newfoundland too, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, uh, with the Pensioners Association, we got um, a couple of different in-person sessions. So the series that I was talking about with Digital Basics, inter um, Digital Basics, Internet Fundamentals, and Email and Communication, we're doing all of that in like this large one-day event in Reedville, Cornerbrook, and uh, Deer Lake. And the potential for us to explore other areas with the other two regional trainers I mentioned is also a possibility. And there's two coming up in the Stephenville area. And Stephenville, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Stephenville and Base is it Bay St. George? Bay St. George. I'm actually I not sure about that one. Ariana. No, I could, would, yeah, but in the Stephenville area, there is one coming if, up. There is one in Stephenville, definitely, yes. Um, Stephenville is the base in George, by the wait, way. That's what, yeah. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that one, Fraser. So, is there an opportunity to have a session in Central? Say, if you're going to be visiting the area, do you travel? Do you do arrangements? So, we just want to know if there's interest in having a session, say, in Gander or Grand Falls. Can that be arranged if they reach out to you, if they reach out to you, say, for example? Yes. So just although our regional trainers, I'm not sure how long they're going to be with us due to uh, funding limits, they might be with us for a while. And the other thing is we have Yusuf who joined the team. He's our train to trainer coordinator, and he's actually going to be going around the island at different points. So let's say there was enough interest in a session around the central central Newfoundland, we would be able to book a session out that way and Yusuf would actually drive from St. John's there to, to deliver that session in person. Okay. So it, it, it's all based on interest basically, but if we get enough interest, then we can definitely accommodate you in that way. So uh, there, there is interest in Grand Falls, Windsor in, um, all kinds of different programs. Uh, I'm uh, working at Lionel Killam Hospice and we're trying to get training available for our staff now. Oh, excellent. Okay. Um, so I will provide you, uh, St Sterling, I will provide you calls information after, after the call. I'll actually do okay. an introductory to the both of you guys through email, okay? Thank okay. you so much. Yes, thank you, Catherine. Absolutely. Uh, there's another question there saying, do you do sessions on buying a new device? So the digital basic session I mentioned before sort of goes over the physical components of different computers. So we, we talk about smartphones, laptops, and desktop computers. And although we don't give a recommendation on which one you should buy, we give all the pros and cons, basically, to help you make that decision. Um, and like, I actually do what I received a question, uh, about what cell phones seniors or older people should buy or what's, what's needed. So I have a few phone recommendations for the end of this session, even, um, once we get to the, the Q and a afterwards, if you'd like. Sure. Are there any other questions for Kyle at this point? If not, we can certainly move on. Uh, Catherine, I, I, I must ask another one. I have to leave very shortly, so I apologize for that, having to do it. First of all, uh, Kyle, as you mentioned, I'm very fortunate to have used services of the Community Sector Council and Techno Tutors, our group, to older workers of Newfoundland Labrador. We find our demographic see, it sort of grew up uh, techno-free. And, uh, and so many of us get to different stages in our life where we have little or no experience. And I'm getting sick of my six-year-old granddaughter making fun of me because I don't know how to <laughs> on. But Kyla, I, I, uh, this is more of a comment. Uh, first of all, I, I want to compliment you, you in particular and your staff and techno tutors for the wonderful, empathetic job you do in delivery of this service. 
you're very kind, very understanding, and uh, and very aware of the clients that you deal with. I know in our group, and uh, it's uh, much needed. We tried to purchase these services many times. They're not available or they're too expensive. So TechnoTutors is hitting one out of the ballpark many times. But uh, thank you very much, Kyle, for all of the obvious care that you and Manny and the others put into it. It's uh, it's a real win-win, and uh, that empathy and understanding and your knowledge of what you're doing really shows through to people who use the services. Thanks very much for that. You're welcome, and thanks so much for the, the glowing review. If ever, Did everyone hear that so that we can get some more people with techno tutors? Uh, it's recorded. We got it. There we go. Here, here. I totally agree with Mike. No, oh, thank you, Leslie. Thank you so much, Mike. Um, Paul, do you have anything else that you would like to share? Uh, I had a, a very brief little presentation on overcoming techno fear. If uh, we can go over that, it'll probably take 10 minutes. Um, do you mind if we actually just put that on hold for a moment so we can go ahead and let Sherry present? And then at the end of Sherry's, we will see how much time that we have for you to share your other your other presentation. Yeah, certainly, because that was like an extra little component in case people were interested. Um, but I would prefer to go over like some of the questions that people have sent me uh, and obviously get Sherry's presentation through as well. Perfect. Thank you okay. so much. No if worries. Could... So yeah. there we go. There, there we go. Thanks so much. OK, Sherry, I'm going to go ahead and pass that over to you right now to share your screen. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see some familiar faces on the line. Just give me a moment as I share my screen. I'll also apologize for my very chatty cat in the background. If it's a, a distraction, I apologize. She's also pretty intrusive, so she may just jump on my back at any moment, but I, I typically don't uh, skip a beat when she does. Hope that everyone is doing well today. I know we're all tuning in in uh, the middle of a storm, so I do appreciate you taking your time. It can be tricky to, to tune in. We do see your screen too, Sherry, just to let you know. Awesome. That was going to be my next question. I was just going to throw it out there if, if folks could see. Do we have any big black bars covering anything? Because I know sometimes... Uh, Zoom can be a bugger for that. We see everything fine. Oh, it looks good. Great. So welcoming, good morning. Um, it was That was a fantastic presentation, Kyle. I'm glad to know a lot more about your program. We'll be sending folks your way, that's for sure. Um, well, awesome, thank you, Sherry. Yeah, we have a technology program, but it looks a little bit different than yours. So I, I think that probably you should get to know our tech guys, but that'll be a, a different conversation. So today I'm just going to chit chat a little bit about um, what Empower offers as a service um, and as programs as well. And I want to preface by saying we offer services to people with disabilities. When we hear that that term disabilities, it's not a dirty word. Sometimes folks veer away from the word. And it's not one that a doctor needs to prescribe us in order to receive services at Empower. Empower services people that identify with disability related barriers. And for a lot of folks, we acquire new disability related barriers as we age. Um, I know I am, am certainly acquiring new disability barriers as I age, like arthritis. That's something that is new in my life that I'm kind of navigating and managing. And I'm sure there's lots of folks on the call with similar th things that are, are happening, that we're acquiring new disabilities. So I want for folks to understand that we are here to support those new acquired barriers that you're acquiring in, in older age as well, um, or maybe through an accident. You don't necessarily need to be born with a disability or labeled by a doctor in order to acquire our services. You just need to need help. That's really what it comes down to. We're here to help everybody. So today we're going to chat about who we are at Empower Disability Services. We're going to go over our history a little bit 
um, just a smidge. I like uh, I like telling stories, so that's a little piece of it. Uh, we are also going to chat about what our vision and our mission is and give a very brief overview of our services and activities, um, simply because there, there certainly is a lot going on at Empower at any given day. So it's important to recognize that we are a resource center that is designed by and for people with any type of disability. So that is cross-disability, and I'll certainly leave out some... Uh, some headers here, but people who are deaf um, experience vision loss, um, have autism, ADHD, or other neurological disorders, mental health issues, um, individuals with physical disabilities, all are served through Empower and served with equity. We offer a wide range of disability-related information, services, and resources. It is our goal to support people in making informed decisions about their lives. So we provide information and guidance. We don't provide control and we certainly don't push people into making any sort of decision that we see as right. We're just providing people information in order to enrich and empower their lives. We make we support those people with disabilities to then make their own choices and take risks and have control over their lives, which is really, really important. None of us want to, to lose access to our freedom or our own personal autonomy in any regard. And that is something that we we strive for and we fight for at Empower. So this here, this is our little center, and this is where I'll I'll kind of get into that history and a, a little bit of storytelling. So this is what our center looks like um, right now. The the little window to the left of the, the door, if you come and knock on that window, that's my office. You know, you'll I'll wave and say, come on in. Our doors are even magic. As you start to walk towards the center, those doors will open for you um, because we are that accessible. You, you don't have to hit a button in order to get in. The doors are just open for you. Um, so at any time, feel free to pop by our center and learn a little bit more. Our history is kind of neat. I work there now, but once upon a time, this was actually a home for people with disabilities. As many of you on this call would be um, aware of, once upon a time, people with disabilities um, once lived in institutionalized care because it was understood um, or feared that people with disabilities wouldn't be able to be cared for in a typical home or in their typical community. But of course, we we certainly saw better than that in the 70s and 80s, and a lot of programs were designed in order to resolve that problem and deinstitutionalize people with disabilities. So the center that you're looking at right there was actually built as a home for people with disabilities that were moving out of institutions like the Waterford Hospital um, or Exxon House, Children's House. They would move into this center and learn the skills that they needed in order to build a more independent life. So we still have a hop in kitchen. I cooked pancakes for everybody yesterday. Um, and, and that kitchen is still there for folks to build and learn the skills that they need to in a safe and friendly way. But once upon a time, they literally lived in house to do that. So it really is a cool um, thing to know about our center that we have evolved from this very location. Of course, people don't live there anymore. They don't need to. And thank goodness. But we are still driven and, and moving in the same way that we are evolving with time and just changing our services as folks need it. So we did transition from that model, from a live-in model in either 97 or 98. It's very unclear as to when that last resident moved out of the center and we officially became a resource center. And at that time, we became a member of Independent Living Canada. We actually, while we're now branded in power, we're actually continue to be a member of Independent Living Canada. And we are one of 24 centers across, for, across Canada. We are a not-for-profit cross-disability organization that serves all of Newfoundland and Labrador. Of course, much like Kyle, we have some uh, limitations as to what we can offer 
um, outside of some major centers, especially outside of the metro. We've got lots going on in the metro, but we do have some programs that are dedicated specifically um, to rural Newfoundland and Labrador. And we're always, always um, doing work to see how it is that we can better serve those individuals. Of course, if you've logged on to Zoom today, our services are fully accessible to you. And almost all of our activities are offered as a hybrid if you are interested in, in hopping on for some fun stuff. Our vision for Newfoundland and Labrador is an inclusive community for all. We would love to see a society that embraces diversity and the rights of all individuals to choice, self-determination and independent living. Our mission is to provide supports, resources, and opportunities for persons with disabilities to make informed choices about their lives. So again, it's the informed choices, the choices lay in the hands of people with disabilities. This is just some of the cool stuff that uh, when we say that we provide guidance um, and opportunity. So this here, I'm a I'm an Islander. I was born on the island, um, and I'm sure most of you were as well. I am a full believer that as Islanders, we have a born to us right to dip our toes in the ocean, regardless of our ability. And what we see here um, is an incredible, incredible device that was purchased um, by the, the municipality in Deer Lake not we didn't purchase it we guided them towards where they could find some financial resources where can you apply for some grants in order to get some accessible equipment and provided some guidance on what equipment would meet their needs best there are lots of devices that look like this one and operate a little bit different so um, we do provide guidance uh, to those communities as to which ones might work best for their residents based on the actual people that are living in the community, not just an assumption that this is best for anybody in a wheelchair. We are here to help. That is what we are here to do. We are not here to guide or to pressure. Um, we don't do any real political you know, service at all. We are here to work with individuals. That's what we are here to do. We're here to, here to offer a hand up and sometimes a hand out because sometimes that's what we need to um, not just somebody dragging us up, but somebody saying, here, I got I got what you need. We offer a lot of services and activities, and what I'm going to mention here today is just a very, very brief glimpse of what we offer in regards to programs. Um, and I'll break these down a little bit so folks understand what you, you can receive through these services. Our advocacy services is actually probably one of the most in demand and busy, busy services that we offer. Advocacy is a way to help you to use your voice when you are in a situation where you need to fight for your rights in some manner. So we often say that advocacy is helping people to navigate systematic barriers. So that might be in the judicial system. Maybe somebody is having some legal troubles. Uh, maybe somebody is having issues navigating personal home care or having issues within the medical system. And it can be really, really hard to fight for those kind of things on your own. Our advocacy team is there to help you, not just to find your voice, but to get you the information that you need about your rights, what your rights are, and really how to make sure that your rights are protected and maintained. Our career services program offers um, Guidance in the three E's, we like to say, education, employment, and entrepreneurship. We do offer one-on-one -on -one support to folks um, primarily because we find that that's what our folks need. They don't need something that is a cookie cutter. They need something that's made for them. So we do offer one-on-one -on -one services to navigate writing your resume, practicing an interview, but more importantly for our folks, navigating what barriers might come up to your education. Maybe you're not being accommodated in school or in the workplace and you need somebody to help you in that regard. Our career services can help there, but we also offer a lot of skill development programs through our career services as well, um, like transition to work programs and um, as well as 
specific entrepreneurship programs like the Youth Ventures Program. We offer the Youth Ventures Program um, as a specific supportive site for people with disabilities every year. We also have technology services at Empower, and we're really proud of our technology services. Um, it is continuing to expand every year as the need for technology expands each year. So we actually have three different areas within our technology services right now. Um, one is actually through Inclusion NL and our employer and corporate services. So we have um, somebody on our team that works with businesses like NTV, for example, is one of our customers right now. This individual, our tech person, is doing a full audit and review of their websites to be able to provide some guidance as to how to make that website more accessible to people with disabilities. So there may be some people on the call who maybe use JAWS or other screen readers for different reasons. We want to make sure that those websites work in a way that's optimal. So we, through that technology service, we do provide some corporate guidance as well. We have somebody who provides guidance and education around adaptive technology. When I say adaptive technology, that is technology that is designed to be adaptive to your needs. So JAWS that I just mentioned, a screen reader that'll read everything out on your screen in the event that maybe you struggle with literacy or you, um, like me, just process information verbally better than you do visually, or maybe you are you have loss of sight, we can help you to learn those technologies and to better understand which one of those technologies is best for you. JAWS is too expensive for me. That's the fancy one. But if I had low vision, I'd want JAWS. I'd really want everything. But for me, I just need something simple that's going to read it to me so I can hear it out loud. So the guys have got me set up with something free. Uh, we also have somebody to help you navigate those technologies if you don't know how to use them, uh, especially your basic technologies. How many times, there's this one gentleman actually who comes in at least once a week because he cell phones all shagged up. And he comes in and, you know, just gets his cell phone fixed. And sometimes he'll get a fix of pancakes like yesterday when he popped in. I said, oh, my goodness. I said, you don't need to watch Thorne fix your cell phone. You come on and have some pancakes and give that to him. He can fix that. So we really do offer full wraparound services um, within our technology department. We also offer a lot of learning opportunities as well. Um, sometimes through coffee and technology programs where folks can come in and learn how to use Gmail or learn how to use Google Meets because they, they've just realized, oh, my goodness, you know, I've got. Uh, uh, we're no longer doing Zoom anymore. Google Meets seems to be what's hot and new. You can come in and do group learning sessions. We just did a group learning session on Libby, actually, which is a library app for folks that want to access digital or audio books. So we did a whole learning session on how to use that app. And we dig in a little bit further to all of those learning sessions to say, how can you use this app with your disability and with your adaptive technologies? What are the accessible features on these apps? So our technology services are pretty in-depth at Empower. Member services, that's me, and I think it's the coolest, so I'm going to leave it till the end. I'm going to skip that. Um, we also have our, our Building Community Inclusion Project. That one's a mouthful, and I always struggle with it. So building community inclusion is exactly like it sounds. We want to make every community in Newfoundland and Labrador more accessible, more inclusive to people with disabilities, and by nature, more inclusive and accessible to seniors who are experiencing disability-related barriers. We have this project because we recognize it's easy to do things in the Metro. There's lots of money, lots of things happening in the Metro. This project specifically focuses on barriers in the rural areas as well as Labrador. So they will work with a municipality or individuals in a community to navigate individual or specific barriers. We have in the past had individuals employed um, in specific areas, but unfortunately that wasn't our best approach. 
Um, and we really tried that for a long, long time. So we are considering other approaches now and potentially using that funding for regular travel to, to areas so that folks could zoom in and access our, our services uh, via technology. But that once a year, myself and maybe one of the tech guys are popping out to see what's happening in, in each community and to really build those relationships there. But it was through that specific program that that beautiful device happened to, to enter Deer Lake and their community. So while we're not in the community doing uh, things directly, we are still having a direct impact in those communities for sure. Inclusion NL is often one that folks have seen or heard about without even knowing that you've engaged with us. It is employer support services, but that's also how we offer corporate uh, services as well. So you'll see us mostly, that's when you'll recognize us, is when we are at different festivals and events. So if anybody has attended anything through the Frosty Festival uh, in the last uh, week or so, or you plan on attending next week, we provide all of the accessibility and inclusion supports for that festival, folk festival, regatta. But again, we work with employers as well to make their services more inclusive. We don't actually, through Inclusion NL, work directly with anybody with a disability. It is specifically for employers and corporations. We don't tell them what to do. We just provide the guidance and advice for what they're asking to do and the best, best, best practice. If they choose not to take that guidance or they can't, because sometimes what we're advising is expensive um, or it's burdensome, we say, okay, I, thanks for reaching out for this guidance when you're able to make this change, when you're able to, to upgrade on this, reach out to us. We're still happy to help. So that way we still maintain a lot of really good relationships with those businesses and they keep on coming back. Um, we also have partnerships through Energy NL with Inclusion NL. Um, we are, you know, with the, the new gold mines that are, are starting to set up, we are really well connected NTV. Um, Inclusion NL is advising most of the larger corporations now on their accessibility and diversity plans. And I'll jump back to member services because, again, I think that that's the one that's fun. So I am the member services coordinator. Member services is exactly like it sounds. If you're a member of Empower and you are receiving services, I'm going to oversee those services. Anything that doesn't fall under one of these categories, that's me. And we do a lot of things that are fun at Empower, and we make sure to offer a lot of learning opportunities as well. So we offer a creative skills program that allows people to dig in and learn creative skills in an accessible way. So if you need adaptive equipment or if you need um, additional support. So our painting programs, I taught a painting program last year, actually, and there were two people in the program who were blind. And they created beautiful art. Um, and their art looked like what we were painting. They, there was one that was, you know, a bunny. It was kind of an Easter one. Um, but it's about providing the right instruction and guidance through those. Um, we're also going to be doing some quilting with this creative skills program in the future, some crocheting. We have photography happening over the summer. So we're going to be doing some portrait photography as well as some nature photography. So if you're always snapping pictures and once you post it online, you're like, wow, I wish I would have arranged these people better. Um, I wish that, you know, I didn't cut so-and-so's head off. That would have been a lovely picture if Catherine was included or all head. That's a great way to learn those skills. But we also have a empowered learning session that happens once a month. So this month is going to be all about the recreation programs through the city of St. John's. Uh, specifically, we look a lot at the seniors program because we have an incredible fund to be able to support seniors to actually participate in those recreation activities in the city of St. John's. As I mentioned, we did the Libby learning. We've also got some learning opportunities upcoming around nutrition. We've got a nutritionist coming in. We also have um, understanding how to advocate and navigate within personal care. If there's anybody here who receives personal care, you know, sometimes navigating that system's a nightmare. We want to empower people with skills. So we have a lot of skill development opportunities. 
We also do a lot of fun things. We were in the, the Festival of Lights Parade on Monday, uh, and I get to do fun things like create. So we have a, a ghost in our logo, little genie. We were all wearing our genies lit up in that parade and certainly representing ourselves. We have a beautiful garden at Empower that's fully accessible to all people with disabilities to come grow their veggies. So we were selling tickets in the mall on a garden basket um, to support our vegetable garden. Almost all of those activities, and I only talked about some of them, there's definitely lots more happening. As much energy as I seem like I have this morning, I do. So there's always something happening at Empower with me. Um, we have a psychologist actually through member services that offers free pro, pro bono therapy um, to our members. And in order to receive any of these services, you just need to become a member um, of Empower. So reach out to us for sure if you want to learn about any more of these services or if you want to just come have fun. For a lot of the programs, you don't necessarily need to identify with disability. Our book club, for example, is a fully public program where we read a book once a month that is around some disability related subject or is written by an author who identifies with disability. So our latest book club is actually a local author um, whose husband started The Hub. So the book is called Going for the Gullies, and that author is going to attend our book club. So those are just some of the things that we've got going on. I'll try not to, I'll try to cut myself off there because I get a little excited. We do also offer alternate formats uh, as well as disability and language training. So again, when I mentioned that we offer support to the Frosty Festival, all volunteers that work the Frosty Festival have full disability etiquette and language training. So when they are providing guidance to somebody who is blind, they have actually been provided the training as to how to provide that guidance in a way that's safe. So the volunteers that are at Frosty Festival can support people with disabilities in a way that feels comfortable. We also dispel myths. So a lot of assumptions sometimes are made about people with disabilities, and we make sure that sometimes just by being in the crowd and, and saying, nope, that's not actually true, we're dispelling myths all the time, but we also do that through awareness and education um, through our social media platforms as well. These are some of the alternate formats that we do provide. I was delighted that uh, ASL was automatically set up uh, with Seniors NL. Oftentimes, I bring my own interpreter just to make sure that if anybody wants to participate, they can. But we didn't need to do that today. So kudos, Seniors NL. Um, Braille, we offer Braille to folks as well as large print. And that's anything large print. It doesn't need to be something that's super important. That word search that's right there, we have a ton of people that come in with the daily paper or a word search book, and they just use our photocopier to make that bigger. We also have a computer room that is free for folks to use. Just come on in, make an appointment. And within that computer room, there's all kinds of adaptive equipment. So if you have low vision and you need a, a keyboard that is accessible to you, we've got one. If you need a sip and puff mouse that you want to use with just your mouth because you, you struggle with dexterity or using your hands, we've got that too. We even now have a 3D printer, so stay tuned for all the cool things we're going to be printing um, that is also adaptive technology. So the guy, and this is a new program, so they're still very much experimenting with it, but they've developed some things that we can open up a thing of milk. If we've got arthritis and dexterity is, is trouble, you put that on top of that milk that twists and it's a larger thing. We have key fobs that you kind of fist instead of having to twist them this way. Lots of cool stuff. If anybody else like me struggles with cutting your pills, uh, they've got some pill cutters that they can print with just the 3D printer. They just have to stick a, a razor blade into it, obviously. Really cool stuff happening at Empower. And just like I said, we are constantly evolving. So if you want to come visit us uh, at our little house, you can do so by popping by for Escazoni. If you're familiar with the old Hoyles Escazoni, 
Um, we are right next door to where that was located. Of course, you can check out our website, empowernl.ca, empowernl.ca, and you can check out all of our services there and you can become a member. By becoming a member, you will automatically receive our calendar of events um, and just know what's happening at Empower. If you need to reserve, re receive specific services, just like advocacy or career services or even technology, but you don't want to actually become a member and receive our emails, that's okay too. Just give us a call and tell us what you need. You don't actually need to be a member to receive the other services. The only thing you need to be a member to receive is the fun stuff through me. So um, you still want to become a member, of course. That is all I've got here for now. I'll stop my share so that uh, we can uh, boop, 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 sit and have Thank you so much, Sherry. You are so, lots of information there, folks. So one of the questions that I have um, is going back to your technology department uh, and you were talking about the adaptive um, technologies that you have. So do you have samples of the adaptive technologies that are available so people can actually go in and see them to find out what works best for them? Yes. So we don't have every sort of adaptive technology that exists because that would certainly be um, burdensome on our, our wallet, but also in, in regards to space because things certainly evolve. We do have a fair selection. Absolutely. We've got probably a half dozen different keyboards so that folks can get an idea that they can adapt their keyboard. We also have a bunch of different mouses that folks can use. Um, some are really large. Some work as a joystick. So folks said if you just wanted to have wrist movement and not specific, yes, folks can come in and try those equipment so that you're not buying very, very expensive equipment. If you had some question about what equipment or what devices you should buy, you can meet with our technology services in order to really determine that. So a lot of students with disabilities specifically take, take advantage of this because they want to be able to, maybe they need note-taking where the, the note-taking just happens. Our technology services will ask you specifically, what are you interested in? Because that matters. You don't want to get somebody a Chromebook if they're going to be gaming, if they're big gamers. Um, so they'll really find out what your interests are, but then what are your needs as well so that they provide the right stylus advice for you, the right cell phone advice. Fantastic. We have uh, a question in the chat, and it says, do you offer sessions in Zoom? So your office is in St. John's, but you are a provincial organization. So how do people, you know, connect with you, you know, say in Cornerbrook? So we do absolutely offer um, all of our services virtually as well. Even most of those fun member service stuff, we offer in a hybrid model. So even when we're offering something in a group in a session, for example, yesterday we were making Valentine's cards and we were learning some abstract art skills. Um, while I'm not sending out the supplies online, you if you had supplies, you can tune in and pay attention to that session as well. So we do try to include people out past the overpass as much as we possibly can. And now that we're fully, we fully feel out of the pandemic. I know we're not out of it, but we start, we feel like we can navigate out of it. We're already planning a lot of visits to other locations this summer to make sure. I can also see that, yeah, there's uh, some other questions in the chat. So I'm just going to jump on those. Membership is absolutely free. There is no cost to be a member at Empower. There's no cost to use our technology services or our technology equipment. Everything at Empower is absolutely free with the exception of things that we attend outside of Empower that might cost money. So an example of this is on Thursday, we're going to play bingo. We're not paying for everybody's bingo tickets but I am going to be paying for their snacks. 
So there, there's a lot that's provided for free. Yesterday's session, all things were provided for, for free, all equipment, our vegetable garden, totally free. People leave with a hamper at the end of the summer. Plus they get to come back and learn how to make soup. There is no cost for you to be a member of Empower. Just sign up. I will include my email in the chat so that folks can grab it there. But just for ASL as well, my email address is Sherry, S-H-E-R-R-I, at E-M-P-O-W-E-R-N-L dot C-A. So that's Sherry at EmpowerNL.ca. And if folks just want to grab it out of the chat, that's in there too. Perfect. Um, calendar of events. So is that in your newsletter? Is it on your website? How could people find out exactly what's going on? So that's that, that question excites me actually, Catherine, because we've never had a calendar of events before this month. I only just released it. I'm fairly new to this position. Hey. Um, but the reason we haven't had a calendar in the past was actually because most calendars aren't accessible to people. So we had been calling people and sending out people a, a list format, but digital ca calendars now are fully accessible with screen readers. So we do have a fully digital calendar that you will find both on our website and by becoming a member that will get emailed out to you. There are some individuals that still are not loving that calendar. That's okay. You don't have to love it because someone else does. Um, we offer things, again, in alternate formats. So once you become a member, you'll also receive e-news from us, and you'll get a list of those activities so you don't have to look at that blocky calendar. Um, and if you prefer to receive a phone call about activities or a text message, we send information out that way as well. So there's some folks especially younger folks. They don't want me to call. They don't want me to email. Just send me a text, Sherry. Does Just send me a text. Um, even Facebook. I thought Facebook was the hip way to reach young people. It's not. Um, I'm clearly not hip and young, but they just, they just want me to text them. Keep it easy. So whatever way you want um, to receive information, cool. Can a seniors group be a member? Absolutely. Absolutely. You can even set yourself up as a lifetime member so that that group doesn't have to actually maintain its administration in order to continue receiving that that information. Fantastic. Does anybody have any additional questions for Sherry? Frazier, I no see questions. you. I guess I'll unmute myself for a moment. <laughs> and then, well, I, have, I have a question for Kyle also, but... From the point of view of, um, for those who don't know, uh, I am on the board of uh, Seniors NL, and thank you for for this. I'm I'm uh, very appreciative of Catherine and the work that she does in bringing this kind of stuff to uh, seniors across our province. Uh, normally, I wouldn't ask this tough question, but since it's Sherry, I'll ask a tough question <laughs> in, 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 because I know Sherry. I love uh, a tough question. Well, this is a really tough one. And the other reason I'm asking it is simply because you're the first group that uh, I've engaged with now since the new strategy of government has come out on their poverty reduction. Mm -hmm. Now, I can give a preamble to my question, which would help you a little bit maybe with your answer. But I said, maybe I should just simply ask, have you looked at the strategy from the point of view of persons with disabilities? Uh, we have, and I'm gonna keep the answer somewhat short because I feel like we're probably veering off topic here. We have, and we're not really recognized within that strategy and we're a little bit disgusted. Uh, I'm probably saying more than I should on that answer there, but that's my that's my low and short is that we don't feel that people with disabilities were um, included in that perspective in a way that they should have been. Yeah, when I saw where you do advocacy services, and that's the reason I asked the question. And by the way, I fully agree with what you're saying. Uh, you know, 40% of those people living in poverty uh, have disabilities and they weren't even recognized. Nope. Um, and I will be sharing that with the premier plus the, the minister. You're so it's, it was just a question. I'm glad to hear you say what you're saying. I think it's very important. 
the work that you've been doing over the past many, many years, <clears throat> exceptional. So thank you for the work you, you do. And as a person who once back in the 80s wrote an article, two articles in uh, the Evening Telegram that said, here's why Exxon House should close. Well, I'm very familiar with Eskasoni House. So yeah. thank you for that. Go on, I'll go on to the uh, Kyle. Uh, I do want to just looking... add something in there just to clarify, sure. because I want to make sure that um, in regards to our advocacy services that I'm clear. So mm. in regards to political advocacy, we don't actually have um, anything within Empower that we actually have any sort of funding or programming that does political or systemic advocacy. The Coalition of Persons with Disabilities is specifically funded to do systemic advocacy in regards from a cross disability lens. Our advocacy services only provides individual advocacy. So while we kind of make some difference in systemic advocacy just by them existing, by virtue of them existing and doing their work on behalf of individuals, they don't face systemic um, issues. So they wouldn't have had their two cents in that that poverty reduction conversation. Right. Yeah, I know. Okay, thank you so much. No problem. Kyle, I, I think your program is exceptional. Uh, when I first saw it and Catherine sent a, a little calendar of uh, what's coming up and I saw it, read about you, went to your website. Yes, I have a Macintosh, by the way, that goes back to the old Mac Plus that's 40 years old. <clears throat> so I'm very <laughs> familiar. I'm one of those gray haired fellows who are uh, very familiar with technology, but I understand the challenges that are out there in uh, the community when it comes to uh, supporting people and particularly seniors, from the point of view of aging in place, one of the assets of aging in place would be the, the, the now availability of technology and that communication tool to be able to talk to, see people having chats, uh, no matter where they are in the province. So again, I think that's one of the areas <clears throat> you may not have thought about, but it's one of the benefits of the program but the learning of the, those technologies uh, and your group doing it, uh, from a government-funded point of view, uh, there's a quote by Winston Churchill who said, however beautiful the strategy, you should occasionally look at the results. And so often government doesn't do that. Uh, and uh, it's so good to see that I know the results of your organization and the work that you're doing will be exceptional. And I'm sure you'll hear good words going on over the next year and hopefully refund it and growing your uh, support right across the province. I realize you're doing it across the province to a certain point, but the expansion of that program is vital also. So thank you for the work you're doing. No, oh, thank you so much, Fraser. And you're absolutely right. Um, like we are right now, we're already halfway to our target and we still have more than a year to go. So we're going to exceed that target. And hopefully we're going to find ways to make sure that the funding can continue with the rest of the time we have with techno tutors. But I find like trying to learn technology and overcome this digital divide, it's more necessary now than ever, especially with COVID, um, that all these different resources are going online and like, for, for, for example, with uh, MyGovNL, a lot of these uh, provincial government services have to be done on the website rather than uh, through a phone call. And it's just, there's a, a huge threat of leaving people behind if you don't have the ability to, to train them uh, in, on these digital skills that they never actually grew up with. So I think... Techno Tutors is going to be instrumental in helping people. And hopefully the government realizes how fundamental and necessary uh, these skills are going to be in the future as well. Perfect. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, Fraser, for your questions. Yes, thank uh, you. Very welcome. Um, any other questions? Anybody like to take yourself off mute, ask a question directly over to Sherry and, uh, and Kyle? 
so there's not nothing coming in there just yet. So we did have a couple of questions during asked uh, through registration itself. So Kyle, these are for you. General fixes for when wrong letters or prompts are pressed because your fingers are too big. So this is a challenging one because I actually struggle with it myself. Um, I'm I'm typing on my my tiny little keyboard on my phone, and it just I'm, I'm pressing multiple buttons at once. So I haven't really found a, a solution for that per se, but with iPhone. the only recommendation they give is to or iphones or ipads basically you, you tilt your phone into landscape mode and when you tilt it into landscape you'll get uh, a, a larger keyboard size so that would be my recommendation there and the other thing with android androids actually tend to have an ability to increase the, the size of your keyboard slightly But even that has limitations, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Stylus, a stylus. I know. I know. Sometimes we can't type as fast, but a stylus would work too and help for that. Yes, especially with um, tablets. Tablets of any any type are very supportive of those stylus pens, and basically, you'll be tapping one at a time. But a lot of us do that anyways, so. That might be a, a good option. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, the keyboards are really tiny on our phones and tablets, and we can't increase the size that much. Sherry, is there anything that you would like to add? From an accessibility point of view, I that was would actually also be helpful. going to add that a stylus would work fantastic, but you can also use talk to text or other adaptive technologies to kind of nav. Sometimes it's not what it's created for, but it fixes the problem anyways. Um, so oftentimes those talk to text, um, you can actually give an audible command for what to do. So you're not trying to stab at it with your sausage fingers, as I call it, call it, say to dad, you know, like dad, bye, just tell it what to do. Then, then it works, and that works fine for him. He uses a lot of talk-to-text. Um, a lot of your remote controls, for example, that's why they became talk-enabled is because a lot of folks were struggling with the dexterity of it. So adaptive technology can resolve a lot of those problems as well. That's a very good tip. And you can access that like throughout your settings. Most phones and tablets will have an accessibility like within that, that gear icon within the settings. And you'll be able to to turn on those features for um for talk to text, basically. Kyle, I really feel like you need to go and geek out with our tech guys because I feel like they could learn from you, but you could learn from them as well. I th I think that would be quite beneficial, actually. <laughs> we'll set it up it's after going the to call. happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to happen. Any other any questions? I'm going to open it up to our audience. If not, I will read another question that we had during registration. Scroll down a little bit. Uh, Colin, I'm going to really uh, you, I will let you do the ten minute presentation. I'm just going to get down through these questions, okay? Uh, you're going to talk about the cell phones, what type of cell phones we can use at the end of the call. You already addressed that. For anybody that would like to learn how to use a laptop, so you have the, the you mentioned that you could actually come in and visit, schedule appointments to do one-on-one -on -one learning. What about in rural areas? So in rural areas, um, for those one-on-ones, it, it tends to be a bit more 